Hello everyone, Dr. David Perlmutter here, and I, I want to amplify what we've been discussing as of late, and that is this powerful relationship between diabetes and even mild elevations of blood sugar that aren't exactly in the diabetes range. You know, having said that, uh, saying that a person is not diabetic because their blood sugar, their fasting blood sugar hasn't reached a certain number yet, or their hemoglobin A1C hasn't reached a certain value yet, uh, I think is a bit of a disservice because it's not like uh, being pregnant where you either are or you aren't. A uh, diabetes is a term used defined by those parameters, but you know, as your blood sugar begins to elevate, uh, even that becomes a significant issue in terms of your brain, in terms of your heart, and in terms, very importantly, of insulin and insulin's uh, uh, sensitivity in the body, how your body responds to insulin. So we've heard over the years something called this metabolic syndrome. And the metabolic syndrome was a term, is a term, that is applied to a constellation of factors that seem to increase a person's risk for cardiovascular disease. And with good reason, because these are well-established uh, benchmarks uh, that do seem to be associated with cardiovascular disease. Importantly, these are factors over which we have control. And it's now very clear that those same parameters um, over which we have control have a very important relationship to the risk of brain degeneration as well. So we begin to look at this whole notion of metabolic syndrome in terms not just uh, of its relationship to cardiovascular disease, but in terms of its relationship to brain health and vitality and resistance to disease as well. The study uh, that we're focusing on today is entitled Insulin Resistance as a Key Link for the Increased Risk of Cognitive Impairment in the Metabolic Syndrome. Uh, this was published in Experimental and Molecular Medicine. Uh, we just uh, added this to our collection and I'd like you to take a look at it. Again, we talk about this metabolic syndrome and this is a cluster of classically cardiovascular risk factors including things like obesity, being diabetic, and having issues with uh, your, your fats, your dyslipidemia. Uh, and we now again see that these same factors are related to risk for cognitive decline. And that's the real focus of this report that I'd like you to look at. Uh, we have to ask ourselves, well, what are the possible mechanisms that would relate this, uh, these issues like diabetes, obesity, and dyslipidemia uh, to such seemingly disparate areas as the heart and the brain, and we get back to this fundamental mechanism of inflammation. Elevated blood sugar, issues with uh, body fats, uh, and uh, certainly being overweight all increase this process of inflammation, which is really a fundamental player as it relates to uh, brain degeneration, as it is with the narrowing of the coronary arteries, which manifests as coronary artery disease. So I'd like to uh, have you look at this article. I know it's a little bit intense, but uh, with this as a preface, uh, to gain a better understanding of this relationship between our lifestyle choices, including diet, importantly, and uh, exercise, et cetera, uh, and risk for the development of the components of the metabolic syndrome, like diabetes and like obesity. Uh, and, and so really understand that these same lifestyle events which have classically played a role in uh, determining uh, your cardiovascular risk are also very much at play as they relate to the brain. Uh, insulin resistance in the body translates to issues within the brain. Insulin turns out to be a very important trophic hormone in the brain doing some very important things which is why we are now seeing the term type 3 diabetes getting a pretty uh, wide uh, traction uh, across uh, you know, the discussion in terms of what's going on metabolically that relates to brain degeneration. So I hope you enjoyed the study. I found it very, very interesting. Dr. David Perlmutter here. Talk to you soon.